Hello everyone, it's me RGB guy and today we are going to learn about forward rendering versus deferred rendering. What are these two terms and why they are used in, in conjunction with the word rendering and why you as a game developer or a graphics programmer or a technical artist or anyone working on the technical side of games should know about these terms. How these two things help, how these two things differ, everything about it we are going to discuss in this video. So let's get started. So there are two words here, one is forward and one is deferred. So let's try to understand the meaning of each of these words in, in the context of rendering. So whenever you are, whenever we are rendering a frame of a game, let's say you are you are playing a game like GTA, and uh, you have water, then you have a boat, you have sun, then you have a road, right? You have a car going through that road. So how does the computer render? How does the GPU render all these things? Is all the 3D data, uh, all the 3D data of these 3D models is sent over to GPU, then it's brought into the camera space, then it's projected to the screen. Uh, this is the whole rendering pipeline. Maybe I'll create another video of how the rendering pipeline works. But to understand, understand what rendering is, rendering is basically drawing pixels on your screen. So I have this car uh, from the car 3D model to the screen how these pixels are drawn right this that the whole process of rendering how does this gpu draw the whole frame it draws things one by one so it will draw it will draw first the car then the road or let's say the farthest thing first it will draw so it will draw the sun first the background first then the water then the boat then on top of that it will draw the road then the car right so how how does this whole process happen so you have uh, let's say you have uh, you have a background then you have a sun then you have water below it right and then you have a boat and then you have a road then you have a road and then you have a car so all these things will be drawn this way because this is the furthest this will be drawn first then this then this and so on right usually games are rendered in forward manner what do i mean when i say that that the game is rendered in a forward rendering manner so when i'm drawing this background when i'm drawing the sun when i'm drawing the water and as we go below the geometry for this object is pushed on the gpu right and then a what and then there's a vertex shader sh stage and then there's a fragment shader stage and in the fragment shader or in the vertex shader the lighting is calculated for this right so there must be a directional light also right here there should be a directional light here now that the effect of this directional light on this background is calculated in the vertex shader and the fragment shader stage now effect of the directional light which is the sun would be calculated on the water again through the vertex shader and the fragment shader then on the final screen same thing would be done for the boat the road and the car right so what is happening in this lighting stage is we are computing the effect of the directional light on all these objects right in this case this is computationally pretty fast now let's assume we have multiple lights instead of one light we have multiple lights uh, let's say you have well lit uh, cyberpunk kind of scene where you have like one lakh light or thousands of light and each light is affecting multiple objects right in such a case where you have multiple lights if you need to if you need to calculate the color of a particular pixel or particular uh, part of a of an object then you need to calculate that lighting for for all these lights let's say if you have thousand lights then you would have to account for the distance of the light distance of the light and this surface you would have to account for the color of the light you would have to account for the intensity of the light and then you would uh, you could finally add up all those lights and then compute the final color color of this pixel so it's a very heavy process it's a very heavy process as we as we start increasing the number of lights so this whole uh, this whole process of computing the lighting per object right in this particular manner is forward rendering uh, you are taking an object you are sending the vertices of that object on the gpu then you are computing the light then you are taking the next object then you are sending it on the gpu then it goes through vertex fragment shader then you are computing the color of the light for that object and you are computing this for all objects for all lights right step by step so this is forward rendering now let's say now let's say we do not want to go through all this process specifically for the lighting part we want to reduce this process somehow what can we do let's say you had a car here right you had a car and behind that car you had a road so the part of the road that is behind the car 
the compute for that part is wasted right if you go if you go by forward rendering route so if you if you just render an, each and every object step by step and then you render the light for that object then each uh, then whatever pixels are behind this the compute for that is lost because that these pixels will be eventually covered up by the car right the car will take place for these pixels of the road and then and that's why that's why it uh, and that's why the compute is wasted now what we will do is we would we won't compute the lighting for that part initially we would any uh, we would ideally create a buffer called g buffer right which is just a memory store in the gpu and it will contain all the data it will contain all the data that we want right the g buffer will contain the base base colors rendered for all the objects then it would contain all the reflections then it would contain all the any kind of properties that you want at the end let's say a reflection then maybe ambient occlusion map shadow maps right everything and this whole buffer is called g buffer now when you have you have com when you have completely computed the g buffer which is all these maps for all the object for this much of part of the screen then you would actually combine all these and use the whole data to compute the final color which will have a lighting effect right so to summarize to summarize in forward rendering we took an object we sent it to gpu we computed the lighting then we went to the next object which is in front of it then we computed the lighting for it final pixel color there was an overlap so there was wasted compute to avoid that wasted compute we we instead of like computing everything every object separately now we created a g buffer and we we wrote uh, we wrote our final pixel colors for all the objects to those g buffer without lighting and then we did the lighting computations at the end here right so we are deferring so that is why it is deferred rendering now when should you use forward rendering and when should you use deferred rendering so if you have many lights right and you are your scene is bottlenecked by many lights then i think deferred rendering is the way to go it might help but then depending on every case you need to profile your game or application differently most of the games use forward rendering but if you are if you are feeling that your game is bottlenecked by a number of lights i would say go use deferred rendering yeah i hope that explanation helped a bit also do comment if you like this kind of format where i am teaching with whiteboard and looking at the camera and speaking see you bye